first bird to ever testify in court. On May 13, 2015, police arrive at a home near Sand Lake, Michigan. Inside, they find the bodies of Marty and Glenna Durham. Marty had been shot five times, and Glenna was shot twice in the head but survived. After making a full recovery, Glenna told police that somebody had broken into their home before shooting them and fleeing. Marty's three children were going through things inside of his home when they found a manila envelope. Inside the envelope, they found suicide notes written by Glenna. Just a couple weeks before Marty's death, he received a phone call from a family member. The family member told him he had seen Marty's home in the foreclosure section of the newspaper. Marty had no idea about this as Glenna was the one that took over the bills, and she hid from him that they were facing foreclosure. Even after finding the suicide notes, Glenna still proclaimed she was innocent. That is, until Marty's parrot began reenacting the crime scene. The new owner noticed him arguing in two different voices, and the last thing he said was, <coughs> Glenna was put on trial for the attempted murder-suicide of Marty Durham, and Marty's parrot was the key witness. It's time I tell you guys about the theory that Harry and Taylor committed vehicle manslaughter. Now this is not my personal theory. Now, this theory started to come out after people realized that the lyrics in Harry and Taylor's songs are kind of weird and are all referring to an incident. Let me show you what I mean. In style, she says, you come and pick me up, no headlights. Long drive could end up in burning flames or paradise, which people tend to think it means they got into an accident because of his bad driving. Then in I know places, it says, baby, I know places we won't be found and they'll be chasing their tails to trying to track us down, which means they probably hit someone. And she knows a place where they can hide the body, where no one would find it. And then in Out of the Woods, it says, Are we out of the woods yet? Are we in the clear yet? Which means the body was hidden in the woods. And she's wondering if they're clear, if no one suspects them. And then comes Sign of the Times. Now, I know it has a back meaning, but the lyrics, We gotta get away from here, could be referring to the incident. Now, there's one more song to come. But this incident has been thought to happen in 2012, when they were still an item. And there is kind of physical proof that it happened. So in 2012, they went on a skiing trip. Harry came back with a chin injury. As you can see, he was trying his best to hide it. But here's a picture of his chin taped up. Now, again, people tend to think that this happened during the car accident that led to the manslaughter. Now, apparently, Taylor's album Evermore came out after these rumors started to rise. And in that album, she has a song called Nobody, No Crime. Now, the lyrics of this song are very sketchy. I think he did it, but I just can't prove it. But I ain't letting up until the day I die. I don't know, but I think Taylor's trying to hint at us. And don't forget that Harry has a song called Ever Since New York, where he says, I've been praying ever since New York. And this incident is thought to happen in New York. Think about that one for a while. Hey Disney, y'all gotta explain this. So the reason Nemo's an only child and can't celebrate Mother's Day outside of a graveyard is because a barracuda came and nearly clapped his entire bloodline. One problem though. Barracuda don't eat clownfish, but you know who does? According to extensive research, Google, clownfish are known cannibals that will spawn kill and eat their own young. Oh, but that's not all. In clownfish society, the females are bigger, stronger, and more dominant than the guys. So if Marlin's wife went on a murking spree, I'm talking full cannibal lector, he would have been too weak to stop her. So what if his wife Casey Anthony- man, I use that joke a lot. What if his wife squad wiped his family and then he was so traumatized that he blamed an imaginary barracuda for the mass genocide of his children? And what if as a coping mechanism, he pretended that he was able to save one, which he named Nemo, a name that literally means nobody. It actually makes sense. Makes sense because if his wife was actually killed in front of him, according to clownfish rules, he would turn into a female to replace her. That could explain his severe trust issues after the love of his life erased his entire family. Disney, you have 24 hours to respond or I'm just going to assume the worst. Simpsons predicting the future, part one. The Simpsons predicted 9-11 in 1997. The bus advertisement that promised bus tickets for $9 perfectly lines up with the Twin Towers. 9-11 happens four years later. In a 1993 episode, The Simpsons predict the coronavirus. They have workers overseas cough into a box and ship it to the U.S. It then spreads to the people. They have riots asking for a cure. And then they even have killer bees. And now in 2020, the coronavirus is a real thing. And the killer bees, a.k.a. murder hornets, are now in the U.S. Five what-if theories to keep you up at night. What if everything behind you disappears, but when you look back, it reappears? With no eyes, we can't see color, right? So what if there's a whole aspect to life that we're missing because we don't have the right organ to detect it? What if 1111 actually works, there's just someone wishing every time that our wishes don't come true? What if the meteor that killed the dinosaurs was actually a UFO, and we are the aliens? And finally, what if every time you think you hear your name being called, it's actually just your family trying to wake you up from a coma? Just something to think about with these 
So y'all trying to hear the thought that kept me up last night? So just so y'all know, there's never once been a completed T-Rex skeleton found. What about the one in Michigan with the T-Rex locked in battle with the Triceratops? That's not actually true. It wasn't even in Michigan. It wasn't a fucking T-Rex. But I digress. I don't have time for that argument. The point is there's never been a completed T-Rex skeleton found. Which means they've made most of this animal up. One complete item that they have consistently found is the skull. All the other bones are all mismatched and shit. If anybody has seen these pictures, I don't need to point out how inaccurate the people who draw dinosaurs are because they gave them the bones to a baboon, the bones to a zebra, the bones to a hippo and a swan, and that's what they came up with. Y'all got me fucked up. So basically what I'm getting at is it, it's a dragon. It's a dragon skull. A lot of its bones being hollow would have explained why they've never found a complete skeleton because hollow bones are really hard to fossilize. I'm not saying they breathe fire, but you explain to me why there's a dragon in every single culture on the planet. The wildest what if theories. What if when someone's name randomly pops up in your mind, it's because they are actually thinking about you? What if the reason we haven't gotten visits from the future is because we have no future? What if when you sometimes feel sad for no reason, it's because someone has died with no one to grieve for them? What if Mars has water on it because we used to live there and we messed up the climate so badly that we had to send an escape pod to Earth with only Adam and Eve in it, and the pod was the asteroid that wiped out dinosaurs?